Okay, now we're recording now. Second time. Good good evening. Good morning, people. T- depending on where you are. Um, Does it matter where they are, honestly? I don't think time yeah. even matters since we've mostly all been inside. So in quarantine, time don't matter no more. Words. Yeah, exactly. No, it sucks for me though because um, I think after this week, my cl- my online classes resume again, so I'll have to go and schedule again. Mm, okay. But like, I see it as a like, good and bad thing because at least there's like something, like you know, there that keeps me like mm. preoccupied, I guess. Because like, if I had a, just a bunch of free time like you guys did, I I don't know what to do with all that free time to be honest. Oof. No, but since you guys had your like classes uh suspended already, right? You you guys just so have that, like projects and yeah, stuff yeah. to stuff to send. Like, basically tying tying up loose ends. Like the best way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. That's but like, pretty, like dark to describe it, but yeah. You can do it at home, right? This this seems pretty okay. I mean like Wait, you know what? You know what? I we should have done. We should have looked in the gay and gray podcast to see what uh, topics they had. They didn't. No, it was mostly just memes and shit. Ah, okay. It would have been useless then. Like, like, yeah, exactly. It genuinely would have been useless. They just send memes to, like the chat and like they discuss why is this meme funny? <laughs> why? Blah, blah, blah. Why is E a good meme? Like, why is E a good meme? So um, now we'll come back to the gay without gray podcast. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is de- this is definitely hundred percent just without gray. No, and like why we isn't speaking as well. I I, I I just feel like he's there. He can't speak. So our special guest today is YB, who you probably won't be hearing from. Um Currently, it's like what? How many days it has it been since it's been quarantined? I actually don't remember. Mm, Cause like, I think for me it's been like two odd weeks since we've actually gone into quarantine. Like, uh, one hundred forty-one crowns for a fucking shirt. Yeah, yeah, no, R2 is playing Witcher, which he's gotten into recently. He's been playing a lot of Witcher. Genuinely just addicted at this point, by God. Yeah, see, it's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because I'm pretty sure Witcher is a long game, right? It's, it's it a pretty is, long yeah. game. Like, even the main game itself is like rough. Oddly 50 hours, oddly 60 50 hours. And how much do you want to bet you're going to be doing the side quests as well? Oh, the side quests are actually really cool, too. Exactly. Like, they're, like, they're, they're their own mini storylines. It's fun. Exactly. That's that's why, you know. So you're going to be set. I'm like, here. The, yeah, the, the amount this of is what I'm doing for quarantine, man. Now, the amount of games I'm limited to, I think, is like R6. Uh Oh, Earlier we played Gabe and I and uh, Haley and Colin. We played uh, that free game, the delivery simulator thing. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Dude, oh, just... it is really funny. Enjoy over time. No, no, like just imagine gang beasts, right? But but you you get to fly like really stupid, like dude, the 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 stuff in that game because they have like joysticks and you have to like grip onto the joystick. Oh, it yeah, is yeah, yeah, so yeah. hard. To control like like things because because like your w and s when you hold something that's like i think your throttle and then next is like looking around is your mouse like like for the going around and stuff which is really hard and, like it doesn't help either that the controls are like what, what's the word they're, they're like uh they're bad yeah and they're delayed they're delayed as well so like you press like backwards it will take like a second to actually do it you know so it's like uh, so you have to like predict you know like how 
what like what how your character is gonna move in in the span of like the next three seconds because it's hard. Don't. No. It is extremely enjoyable with friends. Like any game is, honestly. Nice. No, dude, we are just there. Like we we're stuck on a single play part for a while, where we had to grip onto a helicopter while hanging onto the box. That's that's. While while balancing the weight distribution of the four of us on the helicopter. And then we had to take into account the momentum that the helicopter goes through when we drop. Because if we go, like, if we drop too far, too early, then we won't make the island. If we go too late, then we'll just overshoot it. Damn. And sometimes the box just flies away for, like, for no particular reason, by the way. It this is. is fucking hectic. Nah, That's no, no. It's it's hectic and like the, the 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 stuff explodes. Okay, the stuff explodes, <laughs> which is one of the better parts. No, uh, there's a, there's another part in the game called Gasa, which you know NASA, you know. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so you get to ride the rocket ship, uh, essentially, um, and it's basically a straight shot up until it blows up and then you fall. A thousand something billion feet down. All a thousand deaths. Yes. And then there's like a there's like a rocket car where it's like the rocket ship is like you know a, a rocket ship. The rocket car is just like a car with a jet engine behind it, so it's so hard to drive. And it like mm. if you if you're good enough, you can fly with it. It's a flying vehicle. It's just the fear. No, no, Arthur. Do you know what my favorite vehicle in that game is? What would it be then? The fire extinguisher. Did I, I know what you're thinking. Oh my! Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You, you use it like a fucking jetpack, right? Yeah. No, no. Like you grip onto it. As soon as you grip onto it, it just starts. It just goes. It just starts, and then like if you can control it, like like I was playing around, and like Haley was with me, right? And he was just there. He was like laughing, right? And then he's like, "Oh, you're gonna go, you're gonna crash, you're gonna crash." And I'm like, nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. This will be the, the this will be my mode of transportation. I will master this craft. So like, I was able to control it, and instead of like flying around in a, like a random crazy direction, I was able to go straight shoot up. And then once I reached nice. like the the border where it was about to explode, I started moving left and right, and then Haley just kept watching in awe, where it's like. He's fine. He's he's really doing it. It's it's a it's a great game that is free at at this time of recording. So it's really good if you people have friends that don't have any money, like like us, you know, or have like subpar PCs like me. Um. There have been a lot of free games recently, though. It's just quarantine, man. It's uh, time for them to jump on it. Yeah, it's, it's sort of good and really bad at the same time. Mm. No, but I, I wish like there would be like that developer who would like make a triple A game free. You know, like a multiplayer game free. Cause, mm. So like everyone yeah, could join in. That's never going to be Call of Duty. Yeah, no, definitely not Call of Duty. I mean, they did make Warzone free. Yeah, but it's a battle royale. I mean, people said it was it's a good not, battle royale. The, it is, it really is, it really is. But, like, that's not the core gameplay of COD. Like, it's the idea of running around a map, just nuking everyone, just dumping on them, British sniper or SMG. See, I feel like that's sort of wrong as well, because one of the other core parts of COD is staying in a singular area of the map with a shotgun. Or an M4 using claymores and Bethes. We, we, <laughs> we don't talk about that side. We don't talk about that side. Those are the forbidden ones. Those are the people. That's like 70, maybe 50% of the community that we don't discuss. Of course. 
Like, I, I would have wanted to get m- more into COD. Honestly. Because yeah, it's just a fun game, you know? The controls are intuitive. Like, if anyone's mastered the idea of, like, first-person shooter controls and making them dynamic, like, it's COD. Like, COD is the one that figured it out. Mm. It's not like we're in Battlefield. It's like, okay, yeah, uh, th- th- there's, there's an amount of strategy to it. There's, like, vehicles. There's using your gadgets and shit. But God, like, originally always started just guns, okay? Mm-hmm. Fucking guns, man. Shoot. That is all that really matters. So they did mess it up with the addition of, like, EXO BS, like, in Advanced Warfare. I mean, like, yeah, they had to add something dynamic to it to change things up. Because, you know, you can't just run around shooting everyone forever. Mm-hmm. It was inevitable. Like... <sighs> Thanos. Thanos, man. It's... Ooh. But you know, they, I I feel like they could have done it in a better way though, because like I think Black Ops Three did it well. Black Ops Black Three, Ops yeah. Three's I, I did it well. Yeah, the wall I running was good. The jetpack was not overpowered. The gadgets were arguably skill based. Arguably. arguably. Then we have like gravity spike, you know. <laughs> Gra- gravity Are spike, you dude. Not like, I I never played COD a lot. My first COD like, game was like gravity a spikes for balance, huh? Gravity gravity spikes for fucking balance. Were they Game though? Combined. Were they though? I I was I main ruin, okay. So I I would fucking know. Like, you know the times where like you'd be killed mid air while you're about to do the slap. Mm. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, I I feel like it was because like when when I played it, it was sort of like the beginning, so people didn't know how to counter gravity spikes mm. but like before when people didn't know how to counter it that, that like it, it's like a nuke it, it was like a tiny very small radius nuke kind of yeah it was an instant kill but like same time it would kill a lot just shoot, just shoot the guy you know just shoot the guy yeah well, I do think they'd find it difficult when he's traveling at a bajillion miles per hour. Mm. Mm. I mean, and then they started using the ops from Black Ops Three in Black Ops Four, which was okay. Which, uh, yeah, I, I was pretty okay. Yeah, I I agree because here in the dorm, like. We were, I was able to play Black Ops 4, so mm. I got some experience with it and stuff. It's... Black Ops 4 was... Black Ops 4 was weird. It was very weird. It's mm. like, you got this new PPK, okay? You got extra 50% health. 150 health instead of the usual 100. Yeah. Got manual healing, which makes you heal faster. It's also yeah. weird. Yes. And like, the yeah. fact that all the guns were slower. Yeah. And the ADS times were slower as well. Yeah. And it, it, people would call it the confused COD game. Because it, <laughs> it, tried to for, it tried to force your feet back on the ground. But it still gave you so many ways to just fly around and shit. Yeah, they, they introduced like that grappling hook guy, like Pathfinder. Ruin, like yeah. Ru- Ruin was using the Right, grappling. yeah. No, I that remember like okay. the, the worst part, I think, about Black, Black Ops 4, at least to me, was the dog. Not because I don't like dogs. It's just specifically in that game. Like, the dog... It, like it's, it's like a homing missile. The dog missile. was so overpowered. It, it's like a homing missile that can be reused. You know? 150 HP on that thing, man. Yeah, exactly. Like Even, even Blackbeard doesn't have that much health anymore. Oof. We, talk, we don't talk about... We don't talk about Blackbeard. No, did you see that old video when like Blackbeard was like still new? And then yeah. four people tried to dump mags into the shield, and like yeah, they yeah. they went through like, like all six. the primaries, and like it it ended in the pistols, I think, I think I could be wrong, but like dude, like if it took that much, it took five primary weapons, like the entire like every single bullet in the map, and like almost all of the pistol ammo to break a single Blackbeard shield. What was their, What were they thinking? Well, like honestly, I 
we, we can talk about a game that we both know and is pretty dear to our hearts, Rainbow Six. Because that's probably the game that we both know the best since we were we started at it, I guess. Balancing no longer exists. This game will never be balanced again. There's no such thing anymore. They they talked about the Jaeger two speed, which you have a very interesting opinion on, similar to a certain YouTuber. Bro, the fucking <laughs> development studio needs an Operation Health right about now. <laughs> See, did Operation Health really work though? Did it? Well, like, yes, but actually no. No, like the amount of videos that were taken in at Operation Health of like just full of glitches and like ah oh, headshot registration and hitboxes never really went through and it just became like a huge meme. This giant meme. Operation Health is a meme that has died out at this point. Which is fine, you know. But like with the stage of like hackers, dude, the, like, the development of hacking in Siege is like escalated so high. L like to the level of like spin botting in CS, you know, where it's like almost impossible to kill them. Because they can, oh, yeah, right. li like, like before, right? The only hacks you'd see in Siege is like aimbots, walls, you know, like, like the standard, the standard. And then nowadays you see people flying through the walls, the floor. That, there was that one point where you could they they found the hack which in the drone phase you could kill people hmm. the, the 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 invisible sledge one as well like dude what the hell you know like invisible iq oh yeah oh i remember Flash when he tried doing shield. that dude i remember when he tried doing that like we didn't want to either but we had to just to counter the people who were pulling it yeah no yeah we were playing against the, the guy the guys who were using like the clash glitch right mm. this was in a ca uh bank it was in bank and then i you told me to try and pull it off and i i didn't yeah. know if i actually did right but with that confidence i just generally rushed into the site which was basement and i killed like three four like three two people I think. I, I, I honestly don't know if, like, the invisibility first, but, like, dude, that was funny. It was, it was just a good rush. Yeah, it was just a rush. Like, the the thing with rushes is, right, you just need to have that confidence, I feel like. That, like, you gotta commit to the rush if you are gonna rush, you know? Like, you can't just, like, Precisely. eh. Like, another thing, you have to have pretty good mechanical ability but like if you're able to catch them off guard like i usually do like you don't need that much mechanical ability to aim for people who are reinforcing you know it's see you just come a long way and man do I enjoy it a lot. The one of these days, like, how long do you think Siege is going to last? At this rate? I don't know. I can't answer that, bro. Like, last season, I would have said Siege has got at least one or two more years good for it. But, like, mm. yeah, at least. Yeah. But this rate, with what's happening, I don't know, man. I don't know. Because, like, it's such a big community, right? Uh, like, I think, at, uh, like, at this rate, you could almost say it rivals with the CSGO community. Okay, still, no. Very far off from it. Really? CSGO is still really something else, man. It's still really its own fucking giant. No, I, I, yeah. It's probably one of the big, like the big three. I don't know if you'd call it that. Like, I'm just basing this off like an anime standpoint where they have like the big three anime, you know, where it's like, ah, these are like a must watch if you've ever even seen anime, right? It's like CS goes that game where now that it's free as well, right? Now that it's free as well, like and like basically everyone can get it. Hmm. So like that just makes it more accessible to people. 
which is both good and bad, but you know, more people. So it's, it, it like that just extends its lifespan even more because like how long has CS:GO been running at this point? Since two thousand, was two thousand eight, right? At least ten years, right? At least ten years. I don't remember. Wait, holy shit! I gotta check that. <laughs> it's like I've never played Source or CS one point nine. One point six is the more popular. One point six, yeah. Twenty twelve. So it's been eight years now. Eight years. Just not a lot of games last eight. Like not a lot of multiplayer games last eight years. Mm. Like, like COD. That's why they have to make a new one. FIFA. That's why they make a new one. Bro, oddly enough, huh, the first Modern Warfare still has active servers. No, that's the that's the that's the funny part to me at least. Like you could almost you could almost say, but not really, right? Like the older the COD game, I like the like the more longevity it had. Which isn't particularly like a hundred percent true, because like you could see like COD two, COD two doesn't have that many players, and I'm basing this off of Merc Music's videos where he's like, uh, the guns through the years, right? Mm. And like he 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 struggles to find uh people in like the really old CODs, but like Black Ops two, there's like it's still pretty, you know, still pretty lively for like when it was released. I, I think they have people on COD 4 as well still, like, but like the, I guess in the COD franchise, it has those golden games, where like, it's the staple, it's the standard of COD, but but you'd be able to confirm that more than me, because you played COD far, far more than I have, in general, video games. It's, it's really hard to say when there was like a golden age of COD, like that's very... Hard to say, really hard to say, man. Because personally, like my golden age of COD would have been Modern Warfare, the first Modern Warfare. Mm. Because that was when I started and I was able to play that for a very long time. Yeah. And then I guess it extended to when Modern Warfare 2 came out and when World at War came out. Because I had the zombie game mode in World at War and the amazing campaign in World at War, iconic at least. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the Modern Warfare 2 is multiplayer. The great guns of Modern Warfare 2, mm. which was just great. Uh, I think for me, that would have been my golden age of COD because it was easy. Everyone was into it. Okay, like that was the game being played. And Modern Warfare 2, everyone had it on the Xbox 360. Oh. Straight up. Like basically everyone had it on the Xbox 360 playing Modern Warfare 2. It is the best console of yeah, that, that, that. That was the real OG. That was the real OG shit. Yeah. Everyone they was have playing the, Xbox the Xbox 360, dude. The Xbox 360 in general was a fantastic console. A really good yeah, console. Yeah, like, especially for its time. Oh, yeah. But now that it's like the Xbox Ones and stuff, it's just declining. Mm. Like the PS4, like specs wise, the Xbox I'm told One now, I think, is better. Next gen, next gen. Yeah. Is, Next gen is called because like PS4 and Xbox One right now they're called next gen. So I like uh, how are they how are they gonna label the generations? You know, I, I feel like that's where they may, messed up because when you say like next gen stuff, you know, it's like they should have labeled it like they labeled like people who were born in certain years, I feel like, like Gen Z or like they're millennials or they're boomers or something, whatever. Like mm. It's a better labeling system than, ah, this is the next gen. Because, like, you could say that when it's released, that's the next gen. But that's not yeah, technically that, that, true, right? So it's like, uh, it really should have come up with a better label. But, like, honestly, if you were to pick a console, like one of the next, next gen consoles, which one would you probably buy? From what we're being told right now, they say that the Xbox. What's the new Xbox gonna be called again? I have no clue. Um, let's just call it the next next Xbox or the Xbox Two or. Dude, they should call it the next box. The dude, that would be funny. But then, like, as soon as like the next 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 gen comes Series up, X, there it is, Xbox Series mm, X, which is yeah. so fucking redundant. 
Well, like, like, it, like if anything, <laughs> the entire series of the Xbox was the Series X, man. Mm. Since nothing else shows the as X. Yeah, Except like, X series. Okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, HyperX and X series exist. Oh God. PlayStation is like far more simple. Just, just yeah, people one. would say that um people have said like the reviewers and shit say that Xbox Series X has better specs than PS5. Mm. No, that apparently that was the case with the Xbox One versus the PS4. Not the Pro, like the original. If, yeah, if we say the original ones, yeah, but the thing was PS4 had better not really better but i think they had more desirable uh exclusive titles yeah they had yeah, more desirable titles. exclusives which really pushed it further and like mm. the the things that xbox did with their like exclusives like a lot of people i know they bought the xbox one specifically just for halo because it's halo, halo. And gears yeah halo and gears those were the two Wait, biggest when you ones, think right? Xbox exclusives, when you think Xbox exclusives, it's really only Halo and Gear. Like, I guess Xbox players are gonna fucking kill us for this one. Most probably, like, you know, if we ever, I, if this yeah. ever gets posted. You know. Yeah, why can I play Xbox 360? The only actual exclusives that came to mind was Halo and Gears. Like, it was just one, one or the other. What well, were Xbox exclusives of the year? Ex- dude, I could barely remember. I mean, could you call it the Connect Games exclusives? Because like, technically, they're like you know, exclusive really. to Xbox only, but like not. Sunset Overdrive is an Xbox exclusive. Ah, uh, dude, Sunset Overdrive is a fantastic. But it's PC also though, so you know. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, like, or wait. Yeah, Blind Forest. Is that not on this board? Let, let me check. Let me check the Xbox CMT One. Is, is Xbox exclusive, but that's like current gen Xbox. You know, like it, it's not iconic. Yeah. Here, let me check. Exclusive games. Let me let me check. Uh, Forza. Is that gonna be an Xbox exclusive? Cyberpunk. Is it? Or is it gonna um, have like that? Is it gonna have that one month exclusivity where like it's on Xbox first for a few months and then like comes to the other platforms later? No. Um, Quantum Break, which Quantum Break was Xbox. Xbox. Only. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. It was Xbox and PC. Yeah. Or in the and the Will of the Wisps, Sunset Overdrive, like. I, I guess that's, like, the biggest proof that we have. Like, I have to research Xbox ex- exclusive to even remember. Yeah, yeah, and, like, these aren't, these aren't bad games either. These are, these are part of, like, these are all really, really good games. Yeah. But, like, it just doesn't... It's just not as game. memorable. It's, like, not as memorable. it's not as iconic as Uncharted. The Uncharted series was fucking mm, amazing. Dude, man. no, yeah. Like, the way they, like, ended not... the fourth one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, like, super... Like, not everyone in the gaming community is going to gravitate to it, mm-hmm. but, like, a lot of people in the PS4 community, a significant amount of people in the PS4 gaming community know about it, and it's just this great masterpiece of a series. No, it is, it is, it. it's, it's like, a fantastic game in general, you know? It's, it's like, Indiana Jones, man. Like, it was Indiana Jones done right. No, and, dude, like, remember you were able to play Crash Bandicoot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude, like, and, like, that played off of Xbox exclusivity. You wouldn't have had that if it weren't for Crash Bandicoot being a... Uh, PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, exactly. It's a they called it an Xbox exclusivity. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Oops. Oopsie. But yeah, see, it's just PlayStation was very memorable, and like the release of the Xbox One, I feel like had a really big impact on the sales. Yeah, definitely. Because like I, I remember watching like Angry Joe talk about it when it was first revealed. Dude, he was mm. pissed off. Like, like, dude, remember, remember the, remember the thing where you can't like rent games. You couldn't rent games anymore. Yeah, you can. You can't lend games. Yeah, lend. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like it's specific to your Xbox and your Xbox only. Dude, that was like, like that was a big oof. That was, I'm like, oof. That was really bad. Like the one where it's like, ah, oh, you can't. What was another thing with the Xbox? It has to be like, it had to be hundred percent always 
online connected. So it was like, uh, like it's just that entire marketing scheme, like Microsoft and so I really need to, you know. Whew. Honestly, dude. This is happening anymore. I don't know where we are. Uh, we're just fighting. The whole world is having competition after competition. Mm. Yeah. Oh, nah. Could be worse. I mean, it's not World War Three. you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Could be. Could be calm, but... Mm. Who knows? Who knows? Jesus Christ, I have not played any of these fucking games. No games. I should really start playing like, like Forza and whatnot. Yeah, I, I never was into like racing games. And stuff. Or, or like the sports games either, you know, FIFA, NBA. I never played sports games. I did like, I wanted to play more racing games, but the ones I ended up playing weren't, weren't so fun. No, like, do you see those people who like soup up their systems? So it's like they have a, like a real like chair that moves with pistons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I find that the coolest part about like racing games like just the people who are willing to go so far to make like a legit like an actual car at this point J just like on the screen though really funny it's really good good Thank shit you. then you gotta get the race on bro <laughs> oh yeah no instead of buying like an actual car they'll spend money to build a car seat that moves up and down, left and right. I think. I don't know. It's weird what like genre of games people gravitate to. Like it's hard to find a player that would like enjoy any genre of game. Yeah, because I like if you like one genre, then you won't really like another genre. Because like. Mm. That, that's unless like you have like such a big taste where you like literally like everything which is i don't think that ha that that's a thing mm. but it is definitely good to keep, like as a player you have to keep that open mind like yeah definitely like at least try and at least try to see the appeal in it you don't need to be appealed by it to understand why other people enjoy it and like that, yeah. that really opens your mind up to why you yourself enjoy your own genre yeah. No, I and like, like once you movie. find that root cause, like yeah. for, for me, once I saw like the root cause of why I enjoyed like shooters and shit, and like why I enjoyed playing in general, it helped me open up a lot more to exploring other genres. The idea of challenge, the idea yeah. of being challenged and accepting that challenge, trying to overcome it. Yeah. Dude, like. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the only game that happened with me, like before Rainbow Six and stuff, the first game mm -hmm. that I ever gravitated towards, because I, I assume yours was like Call of Duty. The, what the very first game I played? No, like the ones that you like gravitated toward. Where you're like, I like this genre of game. It wasn't that I gravitated toward them. It's that I didn't have much choice at the time, because I would just play whatever my dad was playing or my mom was playing. And like whatever they'd leave running on the computer, I'd end up playing it. I'd end up playing that. 
and they all just so happen to be shooters. They never mm-hmm. played like Dota, they never played like Warcraft or anything like that. Mm. But mine, I think, was like RPGs. Mm. Because of Persona 5 in particular. Because of Persona 5. Mm. It's, such, it's just such a dynamic game, you know? It's just like... It's not the most difficult game in the world, like Dark Souls yeah, or yeah. Bloodborne. But like... It's... In concept, it's great. In execution, it's great. Yeah. And now that the it has royal identity. version... There we go. Yeah, the... Now, now, like you, you heard about Persona Five, the Royal, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They added. Really, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. Pretty sure it is. Have you played it? I have not because I've just been here in the UK, <laughs> dude. But as soon as this quarantine ends, I would like to throw my money at it and just not be talked to for a couple of months. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> it will. It will take me weeks. Trust me, dude. Like. Probably like the you know how much research and stuff like the amount of knowledge you know about games that you really like like for Borderlands for example right like we could ask you almost anything and you would probably know the answer to it specifically Borderlands two okay like, yeah Borderlands two yeah, that's that's not my problem not pre sequel not pre sequel <laughs> no but yeah Border yeah. Borderlands yeah. two yeah right I w- I did so many hours of research in Persona five because you know how there, there's the fusion system and stuff right. So I was like doing as much research as possible. And it's the first game I ever wanted the Platinum complete it, mm. which I did on my second playthrough. Where like I put my heart, soul and everything to get every single achievement on there. Like I researched like there's this one achievement, right? Where it's like you have to get all your confidence, confidant to max level. And for that, you need to have like a specific thing every day so i was able to find a guide that does exactly that it tells you what to do every single day to get max knowledge max guts max charm oh no i forget the five to make the star but yeah the max like personality stuff and like the max confidence which is really hard to do in like your first place Mm, and I we're not used to mechanics yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the technicalities at least. Yeah, yeah. And like how every day you have like a set amount of stuff to do and it's like you don't know which things progress the day. Because like sometimes you can do multiple things in like because you know how it there's make any uh, progress, yeah. Yeah, there's like more names. Yeah, because like each each day is like part of the story and shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and like I, I was that kind of guy, Artu. You know how when we played Pokemon, I didn't care mm. about like debuffs or uh yeah, yeah, yeah. type advance i picked charmander and i just went with it you could have a water type but if your level your water type was like level 40 mine would my my charm like my charizard would be level 100 but, you know and like because of that i think on the third i finished every like palace when i had at least 20 days left and no 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 like i asked jason about this and like there were times where he had like difficulties and stuff and yeah he finished like the palace like two days three days before like the deadline but i i thought so methodically into it and i over leveled myself so much that i was able to just destroy like almost every palace in general good shit no, no, like, like I found like ex, like experience exploits, dude. Like that's how far I went down, and it was, it was so worth it. Honestly, it was so worth it. And this is like the, the characters in that game. You played Persona, right? Or do you play Persona? I have not gone far into like I haven't. I basically haven't. The as the best way to say, I basically haven't. Hmm. When quarantine's over, you need to invite me to your house, and I will bring Persona over, and then we will play. I Persona. have it, yeah, I have it. That's the thing. Ah, I then good. I won't have to. I won't have to bring my copy. Let's go play Persona. <laughs> like, like, 
anyone you could ask, generally. I ask them if they have a PS4, I ask them if they played Persona. And if they say no, I will just give my copy. I will lend it to them. Just to experience it. Because it's just so good. <laughs> like, right? Like, this, the music, the design. The style. Just, just, yeah, the general style is just mesmerizing. To such a point where it's like, it got me falling, dude. It got me falling. Yeah. The waifus are like... It's really like, not much like it, you know? Mm, no, that's why, like, Persona 4 and 3, they were pretty good as well. But, like, mm. they don't have... I, I'd say, I'd say yeah, they, they lack the style because of the time, you know? They weren't able to make a game that was, like, so visually artistic and aesthetic like Persona 5. Yeah. But like for the, for the games they were, they had amazing sound still. They had a great story. They they had great mechanics as well. It was a fantastic game. The only thing that was it was missing was the style. And if they make a remaster, you know I'm I'm throwing my money at it again. But dude, <laughs> I I'm throwing my money. Like is there a game, like a game franchise that you do that for? I'm not sure, really. Wait, repeat the question. No, no, like, for me, right? If it's a Persona game, I'll probably, like, do almost anything for it. What, like, play is it? there a... To get it? What, the, yeah, the yeah, one? yeah. Like, like, to get it and play it. Ah, hi, Niz. Welcome. Ah, he's muted. Ah, Niz, we're recording. Are you... At this point in time, I'm not sure. Don't, don't really think there is. Mm. I, I think I just found my thing, you know. Just that general style. I can't wait for it. If they're making a Persona 6, dude. Wait, is YB here as well? No, he left. No, 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 no. Why, 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 why is here? But, like, he's just below my... He's in Bravo Squad. He's in Bravo. Huh. Yeah, he's muted in Yeah, so oh, yeah. Like, he's basically not around. Up. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, I guess it's hard to say because like I would say Call of Duty because that was like part of my childhood. Like that was me growing up. That was my introduction to games and like the idea of wanting a challenge, the wanting the thrill, the action. Like, yeah. I wanna say Call of Duty, but <laughs> it's been pretty disappointing lately. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, I was so glad when Modern Warfare came out, like the new one. Like, yeah. I was so fucking glad when that came. That was good. Like, mm -hmm. That was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Uh, fuck. And then I would have said Far Cry as well. That was the other shooter I played. Far Cry as a oh, kid. Oh, Far like, Cry. My, par my parents had genuine vivid memories of me saying, "Mommy, Daddy, I want to play Far Cry." I was like, <laughs> uh. Mm. And no, so you've played like all Far Cry games, besides like the fifth, I think. I didn't finish five. Game played five. Mm, okay. I played one, but I don't remember anything about it. Yeah. I remember bits and pieces of two. Never got the chance to play three. I tried it in gameplay one, but never got to play the story. Play the story of three. Went went overboard with Far Cry four, like. That, that replaced Borderlands for a while. I was always mm. playing Far Cry 4. Ah, so you're like Franco. Yeah, and and I and I I want to say I got good at it, like the fucking combos with the knives and throwing certain things. And yeah. Just sniping and go, pulling out your bow at random times, just landing that fucking headshot at a distance. Yeah. So yeah, Far Cry 4 was shit. No, it was it was great. I played some of Far Cry Primal, but it wasn't too good. And then Far Cry 5 and Far Cry New Dawn came out. Those were just not for me. Mm. Far Cry 5 did have a very weird, culty story. Like, it was a great in concept for an execution. Like, having a mm. cult story is nice. But just yeah. 
just did, didn't take the right steps for it. Nah, the drug part, the girl, like, I, I forget her name because I never played Far Cry 5, but like, the I girl's remember, thing. I played that mission, but I didn't understand the context until after when I asked you to explain to me. No, nah, dude, like, she, like, you were, she was like the druggy one, so she like drugged you up and stuff, so she was like bouncing over the place and was like really creepy. But it was like, really? Is that how you fight? Like, with drugs? And then it's like, you, you make me hallucinate more, like, so there's more of you? That's a bit odd. Mm. It's like, you know. Though still, I love, like, j just the gunplay in Far Cry, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. It's, like, it's a weird combination of, like, COD and Siege in its own little way. Yeah. And Battlefield, kind of. Like, the parkour aspects of it are really fun as well. Yeah, that too. Like, first-person parkour. Like, Not like the, swing, dude. the swinging? Dude, the swing. Dude, the swing is great. No, the, like, the hand gliders. The hand gliders. Dude, I love the hand gliders. And, like, the wingsuit. Yeah, yeah, the gliders. The wingsuit was too. fun, dude. The, the wingsuit was fun. It, it, like, it reminded me of a first per. It reminded me of, like, a first-person Just Cause. Basically was dude. You just fly around doing whatever the fuck you want then. Yeah. Just just with a hunting aspect, but man, was it a fun experience. It was so fun just beaming around and stuff, like going to the highest point and then just gliding. One game I forgot to like latch onto or like bring up was a crisis series. Ooh. Crisis one, two, and three. I played most of the crisis games i played two and three all throughout i played crisis warhead which is like a spin-off of crisis one all throughout yeah but i never played crisis one start to finish mm. and like but i just loved it like the idea that it was essentially a sandbox level game dude, the abilities in did. crisis were fun the fact that you're like a exactly. superhuman guy dude and you'd play around like this preset area using the abilities you're given yeah like you're budgeting your energy you're budgeting so it wasn't that an Xbox much. exclusive as well, the Crisis series? No, or I, I could be mistaken. Because I remember I my, I remember I my cousin my giving it to me for my birthday for the Xbox mm. 360. I, I forget which Crisis it was. I think it was Crisis 2 or something. Probably but, do. Yeah. But like, the thing is, like, it's more known on PC because of, like, ever since Crisis 1. Like, Crisis 1 was notoriously known. As the game that will melt your PC. Like, mm. the amount of shit that it was running. Yeah. And, like, people were somewhat disappointed by Crisis 2 and the graphics aspect because it wasn't that good. And then Crisis 3 came along, and it was, like, one of the greatest looking things you've ever seen. For 2013, it blew everything out of the fucking water. Dude. It was just crisis, man. It was really fucking good. I, like, I love the invisibility, to me personally. That like just stealth games in general, I guess. I just like, I like being that sneaky boy. Dishonor is a fantastic stealth game. Oh yeah, Dishonored as well. I never got to play through those. I never got really? to play Dishonored. Never got to play Thief. And Thief was a bit less so. Like, like if you want to play that genre of stuff, just Dishonored. Dishonor is probably the way to go, to be honest. Honestly, at this point, I have no idea what's that one franchise I would like onto. Like, I've played so much already at this point in time. Like, Bioshock was insane. Nah, was dude, that got you. That got fuck. you, dude. It was so well done. It was just mind fuck after mind fuck. Dude, I know. Like, that got that game. Just Bioshock got you gone, dude. It got you gone. The, the way you talked about Bioshock, it's like you found like a new version of reality and you're like your mentality just ascended to the fourth dimension. It's really funny. But it was always a good game though. Like story, gunplay, uh, combat flow, really good. No, I'd love to play it. Oh, hi Niz. Welcome to the podcast. The, the Day Without Grey podcast episode one. Yeah, I wanted to talk about it. Maybe we might as well update it. Up, up. Upload it, upload it. Jesus Christ, I'm slowly turning dyslexic. <laughs> oh, you're you're a bit low though. I, I'm assuming it's because it's early, right, man? Yeah. What well, what did you want to talk about? I 
devices on my PC. It had GTX 470. It, yeah. I cannot fucking hear Nizar. Okay, He's saying. You handle it. Yeah, uh, you handle it. Okay. <laughs> um, he's essentially saying he wanted to talk about Crisis, and his PC had like a GTX something at the time. Right, Niz, right? Yeah, yeah, 470, 470. 470, a GTX 470. Yeah, I would... Yeah. I think you just said it melted his PC as well. And it had like a pretty good graphics card. Oh wait, he's typing, he's typing. So Crisis ran at 50 frames with the graphics card of a GTX. Hey, hey, dude. You yeah, have something old, dude. It's old. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, you guys have a graphics card. Any graphics card is good, cause I don't even own a graphics card. Okay, the laptop that I have now, I don't even have a graphics card. So, so to me, any graphics card is probably a better one that I have. Bruh. Siege barely runs on 30 frames on it now. See, at least it runs. Yeah, even though it's barely, it runs on 30 frames. My Siege runs on 25. You've been playing Siege on integrated graphics your entire life. Yes, that is true. So one of these days, when I get a 30 frames per second you know, screen thing, gameplay. It will feel like some form of heaven, I, I'd assume. No, dude. I just remember playing on your laptop. Mm -hmm, I hate you. <laughs> uh, dude. That was... <sighs> no, and then I, I, I was able to talk to Gabe about uh, Python. As well, and he just like sprung up immediately. He like, dude. Uh, I remember when you lent it to me, so I have like, so I could actually play. Yeah. For like I was that. Like, you also come online that night too, which is also the bullshit. I can come online. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was just me. Yeah. And then I was just grinding because it was like a hundred percent. It was basically like a free booster because of an event or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then like afterwards, they I'm need like, to do that more often. Though. They honestly, really yeah. Often. No, and they don't even tell you when they do it as well. You just like if you play that day, you just notice that you would get like or it's fifty percent. Twitter. You'd have to be following them on Twitter. Ah, uh, do we even use Twitter? Do you even have a Twitter? I have it, but I don't use it. Do you do you use Instagram? You know, not even. Right. Yeah, right. I have it, but I don't use it. Dude, dude, like. I don't know, it uses Instagram. Speaking about Instagram, though, why Centocrats on Instagram? <laughs> it is fantastic, dude. I love, like, dude. Jason even changed his nickname to follow why Centocrats on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the biggest me, dude. Like, when Gian streams, when Gian streams, when, like, when anyone is streaming. Plug, I can just plug YBs. No, just, just YBs as well. Just YBs. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, no, no one else. It's specifically just YB. Yeah, it's like, YB didn't even ask us, you know? It's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, why Cintergrass? Obviously, 100%. Yeah, man, just follow YBs on Instagram, yeah. Yeah, you know. That's Y S N D C R Z on Cintergrass. Uh, on Instagram. <laughs> I, I, I can't fucking speak. I can't speak today, man. Like I've just been playing all night. I just can't speak. I mean, it is six thirty a.m. for you guys, and you have yet to sleep. I don't think. Right. Nope. Yeah. Exactly. No, dude. Just fo follow. Sleep that's that's Y S N T C R Z. Mm -hmm. On Cintocrats, and it's like, ah, of course, my favorite social media, Cintocrats. I, I go on there every day. Influencer. My favorite influencer, Cintocrats. You know, I, I like, like, why we was talking about his nickname 
on on like Siege, how we wanted to change it with that something started with an I. Yeah. He might as well just keep it. one with an I and then replace it with a one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I feel like you should just really stick with Syntacras. It's just. Yeah, because you're not gonna, you're not gonna find anyone. You're not gonna. That's a that's a unique username. Yeah, exactly. It's a really cool one as well. It's like Syntacras. Yeah, S N T C R Z. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like like he's gone through. I think he's he's changed his username the most out of all of us. Mm, yeah, definitely. Like I changed mine from my like my original to Phoenix. Yours from the Wild I Turkey. I changed twice. Yeah, I changed it from the Wild Turkey to BTS Turkey to Turkey BTS. Yeah. Wybie's changed from like what? What was he? What was his first one? Do you remember what his first one was? SNTCRZ. Yeah. So first it was Sintocrats underscore or something. And then it became like Gamates, and then Papa Kim, yeah. Papa Kiboloy. Yeah. And then no, no, Papa Kiboloy, and then Gamates. Yeah. So what you see, Nizar, what you see, Nizar, Sayo hasn't changed his username once. Oh, ah. yo, yo, yo. Hey, why we... Why we, why we, uh, he... we were just talking about you. You don't fit into the frame of the recording that I set because I didn't expect four people to come. Hello? Yeah, why be, why be, why be? Can you hear us? There's gameplay enough for Valorant. Yeah, I'm recording, like, podcast thing and... There's a specific window that I recorded because it was just the three of us at the time. Mm. Yeah, so now you're out of frame ish. It's okay. Yeah, so we were just talking coincidentally, YB. We were honestly just talking. And I think I'm like Artu said I, I should post it. Uh so if you do like watch this uh podcast one, you you would notice that you came in when we started talking about your username. So like how oh, you change your username more yeah, than anyone yeah. else. Yeah, like from like Syntacras to Kamatis to Papa Kibbs. No, Papa Kibbs to Kamatis then to Stance. No, to mm-hmm. Cams. Yeah, to Cams and then Stance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why why I do you know, change like, your username? I don't know. <laughs> when I was playing other games like mobile games, I always changed my name then. Why we go to the most change out of all of us? He always changes his um his sensitivity, always changes his username, always changes his true, true, changes yeah. his operator preference. He goes from like from first being like an ash support to flex. Right now he's I, know, flex, for, uh, I haven't played support in a long time. See YB like flex yeah, is still yeah, okay. Your, yeah. Flex is still okay, I think, for YB. But like support, I don't I don't think like he really fits the role anymore. Cause he's like, I, I think so for, he's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was playing on a, like, this game, mobile game, like, I changed my name, like, five times. Because none of them were any of the games I... And in any of the names I chose, proceed. Damn, dude. Of course. That's the special, especially snowflake of YB Syntagrass. We, we also plugged your Instagram, by the way. Thank Which you. is why <laughs> Syntacraz on Instagram, you know, wink, wink, anytime. But like, oh, so good. It's so good. Just follow that, you know. Paper of Valorant looks really good. Yeah, mm. it's supposed to like run, it's supposed to be able to run low spec as well. No, the, you know, like swag, like the CS player swag, like set his sights on it. Hmm. He's gonna go pro in Valorant. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I, I heard he's already signed. I already, I heard he already signed. Yeah, he signed. Yeah. Cause, cause like signed for a team or signed as a partner with the game. Team. Team. Uh, team. Really no. What are yeah. you? Yeah. T one. T one. As in team one, or is that something different? It's a team. I don't know. But a T one. Yeah, it's like because he can only play on like minor stuff, right? In CS, because of the I buy power incident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so even though he can play minor, he doesn't want to just play in minor, which is understandable. Yeah, it's understandable. 
Well, well, this recording is just about an hour long. Uh, I think we should end it here. I, I no, it's, it's, wait, 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 wait. yeah, it's an hour long already. Yeah. Like, wait, what, what, what did we discuss for the sake of like contingency and for the sake of like keeping track of like our first ever actual properly recorded podcast with proper conversation? Um, we discussed a little bit about quarantine. Uh, just a just a tad. Uh, video games, video game preferences, genres, etc., etc. Um, what else did we discuss in fifty minutes? <laughs> um, uh, the games that like in like inspired the games us. that we att- attached ourselves to, yeah. Yeah. Um. Obviously, following Y Syntacras. Y S N T C R Z on Instagram. Pl- plugging the, the, the great Instagram. <laughs> no, that's gonna be our thing. We're gonna plug him every single time. He needs no him. introduction, man. He needs no introduction. Oh yeah, the man, the myth, the kamatis, kamatis. You know, you know, you know, you know what I mean. But so you, you guys, you guys who are watching this, you know, just consider this a tester. We, Arthur likes to keep it real on his. YouTube, so there's gonna be silences and technical difficulties from my end, cause I don't know how to record. Um, the the quality is gonna be like pixelated, but but that's just aesthetic, you know, hundred percent just aesthetic. That's just painful. Very true as well. You might as well not watch it more like a listening to. Just consider this like a as an audible, you know, it's a book. That does not have any form of structure whatsoever. And you get a new chapter every other week with no actual cohesion. That's also very true. Also, it's going to be randomly posted for God knows when. Yes. But it will probably be more frequent because we're all quarantined. So I guess that's the end of the first episode of the Grey Without Gay Pod... Wait. The Gay Without Grey Podcast. Um, Take care, everyone. Stay safe from what's happening around uh and yeah see you later